Ladies and gents, can we request all of you to please uh, very quickly take your seats. I would want to welcome and greet all of you back into the house. Well, I'm particularly enthused because we're gearing up, converging towards a celebratory evening, of course, of our music and all, all the things uh, that um, calls for a celebration as well. But before that, uh, just two more strategic and may I say important discussions to undergo. Well, of course, we witnessed the class act uh, that happened uh, just a while ago as uh, Vishal spoke to VBS. I hope we uh, did sort of learn those life lessons uh, in the time that we had in hand. For now, I would want you to please brace yourself, ladies and gentlemen, as we should all be set to learn all the insights, all the perspectives uh, when we talk about how AGFC Bank's data protection journey has actually been. Well, this conversation is brought to you by Digital Track. If I have your kind attention, we would like to invite our session moderator. Could you please request Mohammed Janani, the Senior Director, Pre-Sales Engineering, MENA, APAX, CLO, to please join us. Please welcome Mohammed Janani with a lovely good round of cheer, with all the evening energies. Hi, and a very, very warm welcome to you. All right, so he will be in conversation with our discussants. May we very warmly invite and take the lovely pleasure of inviting Suresh Shankaran, the SVP Information Security Group at HGFC Bank, who indeed kindly consented to be with us this evening. Thank you very, very much, Suresh, for joining us here. And, uh, uh, you know, there would, there's this one thing I would love to say about you, that you're humble to a fault, so thank you for being that amazing person that you already are. May we also request uh, Shahid Sheikh, the Regional Sales Director, Digital Track, to of course join us over this fascinating conversation as well. Well, uh, these are the two discussions there, and I would uh, leave the back door of the discussion, the contours of this discussion would be held together by Mohammed Janani. So on that note, over to you. Test, test. Okay, it's working. Uh, Mr. Suresh, Mr. Shahid, Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. And thank you. thank you for everyone being here today and uh, giving us the time. And just to set the context uh, for this talk, uh, we would like to explore the journey of data protection that uh, HSC Bank had. And uh, with that, we'll start with, uh, with Mr. Suresh. So uh, can you just you know, brief us a little bit about your role? and responsibilities within HDFC Bank. Good evening, everyone. So I'm Suresh Shankaran. I am part of the CISO's team at HDFC Bank. So I basically handle the data protection initiatives, identity access management, InfoSec awareness, and you know, the compliance like SWIFT and other compliance requirements at HDFC Bank. So I am one of the direct reportees of the CISO. So my job, role involves no having a proper access control identity and access management around the information assets of hdc bank and also ensuring that the entire data is protected through proper controls at all layers people process technology we have to ensure that there are relevant controls in place to ensure that the bank's data is protected only the authorized people access the data and we are able to restrict authorized uh, you know, access to only authorized people and unauthorized people don't access. So for that, we use various you know, processes and technologies to ensure that all these you know, security objectives are met. Thank you for that. And as you know that the threat landscape keeps on evolving, right? And from your own perspective, uh, what are the most pressing uh, data security threats that uh, like a bank face on a day-to-day -day basis? So to, to put it very s simple, we have to start right from InfoSec awareness for staff. So we are a bank where there are more than 200,000 people. So we have to maybe possibly educate our people so that they do not unknowingly by error or by mistake they end up you know, sharing any sensitive information outside. They also comply to all the bank's you know, hygiene acceptable usage policy. So that is kind of you know, sensitization of entire 
No, the bank's users, maybe authorized bank staff, authorized vendor staff who have access to bank data, everybody should be aware of their roles, responsibility, they should behave in a responsible manner and we should also have checks and balance like I say a DLP control where if anybody even they attempt to send data outside knowingly or unknowingly, we are able to you know, identify that and take necessary remedial action. So this would be from you know, uh, internal employee perspective because I am just starting with an insider as the first threat now because earlier it was always a hacker will come from outside from you know, some adversary country, he will reach you and then try to you know, exfiltrate data. So now the situation has changed. There are there may be malicious insider, motivated insiders, disgruntled employees. We have to have checks and balances and controls in place to ensure that not only an external hacker you know, is uh, you know, blocked from creating any issues, we should also have a full visibility on your internal authorized access, uh, you know, and even maybe you would have outsourced lot of information on activities to third party vendors for processing. They should also be having a proper, you know, oversight over all these third parties. So this is at a high level, I am talking about, you no know, controls. Then in the cyber security landscape, you have all these malwares and ransomwares, the various types of, you no know, uh, attacks which keep on happening. We have to ensure that you no, know, all these you know various families of cyber attacks we are able to control. So that would be the external layer for me to put it in a very simplistic way. So we have a you know hacker who is trying to attack you from outside. He can be a state actor or any other malicious you no know, actor in the global space. And you have internal people, your own stakeholders. He can be a staff, a vendor, a third party who is processing data. All these factors come into play when you try to you know, protect data. Great, great. And uh, taking that into consideration, uh, Mr. Shahid, uh, what kind of requests do you usually see from customers when, uh, in terms of uh, security solutions and data privacy? Uh, what kind of requests do you usually get? Hi, good evening all. Uh, this is uh, Shahid Sheikh from uh, Digital Track. Uh, to come to the point, uh, see today we, what we look at is almost every customer has deployed an EDR or XDR solution. You know there is firewall in place. Uh, request currently what we see people coming towards us to, uh, these days is asking solutions around DLP, data classification. You know DRM definitely is what one point of uh, security solution that people are looking for. So so these are typically we see. Uh, so uh, these are the requirements basically that customer come for in terms of solutions and security for to us. Okay, thank you for that. And uh, you know, organizations usually they have different challenges. Um, you know, when uh, in their cybersecurity strategies and um, data protection. Now, taking into consideration a bank, what kind of? I mean, this question is, is multi-layered question, right? So first of all, what kind of challenges? that you see in a banking environment, uh, specifically for securing sensitive data, right? And how was Seclore able, uh, or what kind of role did Seclore play into securing this, uh, this data? And finally, what kind of strategies do you have um, to enable secure collaboration? So, see today, uh, the ch biggest challenge is to have visibility on your data points. So where do you have the data? So traditionally always, no, we had restricted access. So we, you know, if you look three years back before COVID, most of the banks would have staff working on desktops. They would leave their, you know, asset in the office, go home. But in today's world, everybody's working remotely. They work on laptops, they have remote access. Even outside the bank's premises where there is no CCTV, you know, at the comfort of their home, they are able to access data. So the role of technology to ensure that the data is not misused is paramount. So this is one of the main challenges. And there is a lot of regulatory expectation from the government also. So earlier, if somebody used to get a spam call, say, from anybody, be it a bank or a, you know, some finance company trying to sell you some product on phone, you know, uh, it was not a big deal, but after the government 
no you see they are in the process of passing the data protection act in india so if a customer can challenge you how did my data go outside so no what controls the organization has said why did hdfc bank call me without no taking my approval prior approval so lot of complexities are expected so these are the challenges so as a organization what what do we want the internal employee should access data only for a authorized purpose so earlier any excel file you could send it to anybody he could forward it to the th other person and that person can open and view data whether it is relevant for his job role or not uh, a secular drm solution digital rights management solution has the capability to enforce access controls on a document on data so that only a authorized person can view maybe add modify delete no information basis the rights provided to him so that is something which we would want to institutionalize internally okay and then second part which is more critical for us because we are we do have visibility we have data protection uh, tools like dlp and all no we block all access to you know any U usb drive or no upload all these factors are controlled through dlp so more than an employee when we send information outside the bank to authorize third parties you know vendors who are doing a job for us that also has to be protected and the last part is once the activity is completed i should also be able to safely destroy or destruct the data after the purpose is achieved after the use is complete so this is something which we are achieving through you know seclore we have implemented seclore controls when we exchange data with third parties through a secure channel and post the activity is done the data is deleted in a safe and secure manner so this is how we use seclore both within the bank and when we exchange data outside the bank for a valid business purpose and we also have a capability where we even read the seclore file on our dlp so my dlp solution and the seclore drm solution they speak to each other so when we send a user seclore's file and with sensitive information the dlp is still able to open that file read it and block it if there is a sensitive information which is not supposed to go outside the bank so these are the controls which we are able to you know achieve and the biggest part is you no know, uh, when you exchange data with third parties that channel end to end we have to secure and the road map is even business applications they should generate reports which are seclore protected by default this is something which we intend to achieve you know in the near future for most of the applications with sensitive data so this is our strategy great um actually you mentioned something um, uh, very important which is the ability to scan the encrypted data which um, most of the other technologies um, doesn't give you that ability it's either you let the data or you create an exclusion that the data will just pass and you don't have visibility what's included in that data but in your case you're able to scan even the encrypted and protected data right amazing uh, uh, mr shahad based on obviously your experience uh, you have a lot of uh, clients and customers in the financial sector and in terms of data protection what kind of uh, what kind of strategies and based on your experience what are they working on like what kind of experience do you have with um, financial institution strategies when it comes to data protection so earlier see it was like you know uh, customers always wanted to protect the data which was in house today if you look at there is a lot of data which has gone on the cloud as well so you know it's all about protecting data in house definitely on the cloud as well and you know uh, it's not only about external users now there's a lot of things that needs to be protected from disgruntled internal employees as well okay so definitely there is a lot of regulation that comes so what we work with customers is based on certain regulations by the regulatory authorities okay so we consult them you know what are the process that needs to be put in place 
so so that 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 that's the strategy like you know whatever the regulatory authorities want customers are more focused today that you know we want to be ensuring that not only we protect the data we do compliance as well okay so one point immediately i can talk definitely is dpdp which we are in discussion with lot of customers okay the proactive discussions are on the guidelines are yet to be framed but yes lot of customers are doing proactive discussion to ensure that you know uh, it's not only data protected but they are compliant as well so that that's definitely what great great amazing and actually earlier uh, mr ramin was in in his uh, in his presentation he was talking about the different compliances and regulations such the rbi the data protection data privacy act uh, now how organizations ensure uh, the compliances uh, or compliance with these kinds of regulations while maintaining a robust data security measures um, and i direct this question to you mr suresh so uh, as a bank we are regulated by rbi and they come up with very very clear guidelines so there is a cyber security you know guidance note you know of 2016 cyber security circular and they also give us periodic guidance through various you know letters and specific you know audits so as a bank we have to take cognizance of all these you no know, recommendations so we have to put security controls and data protection controls in all the stages of data right from access to data when a data is created when it is you no know, safely used within the bank and uh, you also have to have good controls to ensure that once the use of data is you no know, Uh, completed you safely archive it in a very you know protected uh, manner through uh, immutable backups and ensure that only authorized people are able to access that so this is something is the life cycle of a data no you create you modify you use you then you store and then finally you delete so all these layers you have to use all forms of you no know, uh, controls and protection it can be you know encryption of the tables in a system so if you are uh, using a application you have to ensure that the data stored in the application at the table level is encrypted wherever there is sensitive pii you use technologies like no terminal data encryption td for say oracle database i'm just giving an example so you have to ensure that the access is restricted to people on need to know basis and even at a user level we will have to segregate who who can view say a customer data and who should view only say mass data show him if it is a you know some sensitive information show first two di- mobile number Why, there is no need to you know expose the complete 10 digit mobile number to the users you can say you know the first uh, three digit and last two digits so, something of this has to be inbuilt all our business applications have to be baked with security and privacy inbuilt so it should not happen ki i go and develop some layers and ring fence the information and that i would uh, see as a no uh, road map so there would be applications which come by default as dpdp compliant this is a wish list as a no customer that i don't have to run around protecting data there would be some specific guidelines from regulators and maybe as part of the dpdp act you get certain solutions which have inbuilt security and even on the cloud there are a lot of saas platforms today it, there is a flurry of you no know, growth in software as a service platforms in the banking sector and any other domain so what is happening is you are capturing sensitive data maybe you are storing it on the cloud within india or no outside the boundary of india which is generally regulator doesn't encourage no the storage of uh, you know sensitive customer data outside the geographical limits of india but there also you have to use all kind of technologies and you no know, something like you no know, bioc build uh, technologies use saas platforms but ensure that you have control on the key encryption key which is enc- used to encrypt the data and stored on the you know saas platforms database so this is something there is a change happening and there is a sensitivity to you know protect data maybe earlier people would you know 
allow printouts to be taken of sensitive data. As a bank, now we have put strong DLP controls where any information which has any PIA or sensitive data, you can't print that data. So all organizations, these are standard DLP product offerings. So we are able to you know, uh, control data usage to users who need access to the data and it's a fine balance. The, if you control too much, then maybe it will have a direct business impact. So we as a bank have to achieve a fine balance between enabling business and also protecting the data from being you know, uh, exfiltrated outside the bank. So that is a very high level summary. I've not gone into very no. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, this this discussion can go for uh, yeah, for yeah. hours actually, and uh, I, I just want to understand, uh, Mr. Shahid, uh, from the list of customers uh, and uh, the organizations that you work with, uh, there's different type of organizations. Some of them they are waiting um, for um, for an audit to happen in order to take certain actions. Uh, there's certain organizations that they are a little bit more proactive into uh, into these uh, activities. Now, in terms of the uh, um, Data Privacy and Data Protection uh, Act, uh, how do you see uh, the majority of customers, how they are acting? Do they have any kind of uh, proactiveness or are they just uh, waiting for it to, uh, to help? Okay, so, uh, when it comes to data protection, uh, what our observation is, BFSI as a segment is uh, always ahead in terms of you know ensuring that uh, the data is protected. Definitely, other industries are also catching up. But yes, one one is BFSI definitely is ahead, and it's uh, not only the data protection as I told for them. Compliance also is very important. If you look at other segments, say you take manufacturing or even education today, there's no specific compliance that comes. But if you look at BFSI, you know, there is RBI sitting for banks. We have SEBI regulating the brokerage industries. We have IRDI regulating the insurance. So, you know, uh, the, apart from protection, the compliance is important. Now, something that is something very hot today is DPDP. Okay, the act has been announced. But yes, government is yet to formulate the rules around that. Okay, so customers are in active discussions with us preliminary definitely but it's proactive discussion that we are having on dpdp okay they are you know like before the rules are framed they are just wanting to understand what could be a possibility how can they be more compliant their idea is you know uh, the rule is announced or the guidelines are announced tomorrow and day after tomorrow they want to be compliant you know that is the kind of discussion uh, a mature or a preliminary discussion that we are already having with them so dpdp definitely is what uh, people are looking forward to and once the guidelines are framed i'm sure uh, people want to kind of implement it immediately. All right. Uh, now, we know that uh, for any organization to, to thrive, uh, there must be some sort of uh, synergy between security teams and the business. Now, what kind of strategies um, do you take in order to, to boost the collaboration between security team and the business uh, within the bank? So my experience is, no, we have to educate the users. So, you know, security should not be, you know, uh, considered as a speed breaker or, you know, some, it is, we are supposed to be the partners for the business and we have to sensitize them that security is the need of our, any breach will have significant damage to the bank's reputation. So, all the new products, new solution, new mobile apps, new internet facing web apps, your you know, new SaaS platforms, all these you know, initiatives should have security inbuilt in them. So how do you achieve that? As an organization, we are supposed to have certain basic entry level you know, controls predefined. Don't buy a product and then try to you know, build security around the product you have reasonable you know, baseline checklist where you will say if I have to buy any solution or even for the existing solution I will have a roadmap to take it to the basic standards which I have said it can be you know it can be access control it can be the technology it can be the OSDB you know following best practices of you know SANS and the CAS baselines whatever the OEM has given you as uh, you know 
baseline that has to be followed. You should have a PAM solution to you know, uh, ensure that uh, the privilege access is controlled. Ensure that you have you know, a VAPT program, uh, application security program. Okay, ensure that your third party vendors are audited. You no, know, they ensure that they have sufficient malware protection controls so that they don't deliver us some product which has you no know, malware, they don't use open source. So this is a journey and we as bank, you know, a bank, we expect all our partners in the ecosystem to also follow this cyber hygiene so that we focus more on banking rather than you no know, trying to find out vulnerability in a third party solution which is supposed to be a banking software. So this is my personal take on you know, uh, the kind of uh, structure we have. And we also have to have a senior management buy-in for whatever we do. So we might have the best of ideas, best of technologies, but we should you know, sensitize the senior management up to the board level. And they are aware, they are aware. And also the regulatory pressure and uh, you know, having sufficient budgets assigned to uh, you know, uh, security programs will really ensure that you uh, know uh, your uh, organization is reasonably safe that is my take and all said and done uh, you know there are people who uh, there are new people who join an organization there will be attrition you should have a robust uh, training programs and also you know controls so it is not only you focus on having a trained employee you also ensure that you all put all forms of you know, uh, controls, but it should not hinder the working of the staff. So that is a very difficult. You no, know, I have very, I have told a wish list, but the more agents you add, you no, know, it slows down your uh, systems also. So it is a fine balance which you have to achieve to ensure that the business you no know, functions without uh, hindrance. So that is my take. Actually, that takes me uh, straight to my uh, next questions. Uh, now, how important do you think is uh, user training in maintaining security overall? And what kind of innovative methods have you and Seclor found most effective in raising awareness? So, no, I keep st st stressing on, no. Uh, awareness again and again because that is the bread and butter. What is the point of you know, having a password protected system if a user unknowingly or knowingly shares the password outside? Maybe he doesn't follow the cyber hygiene. He is not aware that you know, it can have implications for not only him but also the organization. So these are some thoughts from my end that awareness is a very critical piece. Right from you no know, spreading awareness on not sharing OTP to you no know, not you no know, clicking on phishing emails, these are the basic things which any organization does. We also run you no know, uh, phishing simulation campaigns to check the awareness of s staff for you no know, uh, phishing mails. For examples, every employee undergoes an annual cybersecurity training. We also send them regular SMS emails. No mailers. We use all opportunity. Even if you go to our ATM, we'll try. We try to find a no spot to put an awareness message. This is a, at a bank level. How Seclor has collaborated with us is, as a bank, we got wonderful support for arranging training sessions on cyber hygiene and also the usage of Seclor. So. You can have n number of technologies, but if it is not put to effective use, it doesn't make sense. No, it is net net. You are still vulnerable. So what we do is, you uh, know, there is uh, our infosec team and also secular team. We reach out to employees on Teams or you know any online channel and regularly conduct awareness training on cyber hygiene and how to you know use secular DRM what are the benefits, show them the statistics. And this is how we have been able to you know, encourage the usage of secular DRM solution in the bank. Amazing. And uh, Mr. Shahid, uh, just I mean, taking that into consideration and uh, the fact that you have been involved in many uh, SOC projects, uh, what is your experience regarding that specific uh, uh, topic? 
See, uh, today earlier, you know, customers were happy. You know, they have, they have put a sock and thing. Sock is done. You know, the, everything is done. If you look at today, customers are looking at uh, managed security service. You know, it's not only that I put a sock. You know, just check the vulnerabilities and things are over. They are wanting us to give an end-to-end -end security solution in case uh, there is a vulnerability detected. You know, how fast can that be mitigated? You know, that is what the discussions are on with customers today. So definitely, it's not only about a SOC, it's about an end-to-end -end security solution that customers are looking out for today. So, I mean, uh, you give a SOC, you give the incident response, you give the mitigation, that's very important. And, uh, you know, just delving on the earlier question you asked, sir, that, you know, about the security awareness training, it's earlier it was like, you know, security, you know, part of IT team, they are responsible. Today, every user is exposed to the internet. Every user in an organization, you can't live without the internet today. So security awareness is something which has gone to an organization level. In fact, I would say, I think just last to last week, even government of India had also announced that security pakwada or security week, basically. It has gone to that level. So security, I would say, is not left only to the IT guys. It has to reach to the final end user that our organization is working towards. And hence, the security awareness training also becomes very important. So it's like you have a SOC in place, everything in place, but if the end user or the last user in the organization clicks on a phishing email and he is not trained on how to avoid you know, clicking on those emails, the entire control that you have put in place doesn't work actually. So that, that's security awareness training is a very important aspect basically. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, unfortunately, we have uh, run out of time. Uh, these kinds of discussions uh, usually it can extend to uh, many, many hours. But uh, we'll stop uh, at this stage for today. And uh, I would like to thank you, Mr. Suresh, Mr. Shahid. Thank you so much. And uh, a, round of, a round of applause to, uh, to our speakers. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank you.